Another week and another big Miami Dolphins win. What is up, Finn fans? Another week with the great Big O, and we got a lot to talk about after putting the beat down on them Baltimore Ravens on prime time television. Love, love, absolutely love every minute of it. Uh, so if you haven't yet, go check out the best of clips from the live stream. I put out the film breakdown yesterday instead of it being tomorrow, being that the film came out on Saturday. It takes two days for them to put out the All-22. Uh, also, I will be at this Jets game this Sunday. Me and my father will be there. So if you are coming, let me know. Uh, I'm going to go over to the Miami Dolphin, the takeover. going to hang out over at the tailgate. I think Steven, Miami Sports Music, is doing a live broadcast there. I'm going to stop there. So if you guys want to hang out, say what's up, all that stuff, let me know. I want to meet as many of you human beings Beautiful, beautiful human beings as possible. But before we jump into what Big O has to say, I got to shout out my sponsors. And that is PatchVibes.com. Check them out. They got some great t-shirts, patches, pins, hats, all that great stuff. Go check them out. They have a Robert Hunt t-shirt that they just came out with. Use the promo code DDW2. You get yourself 20% off. And don't forget about Backroom Collections. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic artwork. High quality canvas artwork, not just NFL, but all of the sports. Go over there, use the promo code DDW, get yourself 10% off. And I'm thinking about giving one of them away. Now, I have three. I have Jason Taylor, Dan Marino, and Ricky Williams. I'm thinking about giving one away. Uh, maybe might do it at the end of the year. Might do it at the bye week. I haven't decided yet, but I'm thinking about giving one of them away just to thank you guys because we're getting closer and closer to 28 thousand subs i think we're at twenty seven thousand five hundred. you guys keep killing it sharing the videos helping me grow so i thought why not give back and give away one of them think about giving away a t-shirt a miami dolphins tank top so i'm, I'm giving back because i love you guys but other than that let's jump into this great great conversation with me and big o we did it big o we shocked yeah! the world <laughs> we shocked the world yes how are you feeling? 2210. Uh, I mean, no, I mean, it's a one to 10. I'm feeling a 47, but uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> listen, after all the crap we've been through, you know, it was, it was like, it was weird because we didn't feel so good about the Houston win. You know, it was a win, but it was so, it was like one of the worst wins in the history of mankind. Mm -hmm. So it like didn't make you feel good. This one made you feel really oh, good. Yeah. I mean, this <laughs> one made you feel like, like where the hell have you guys been you know yeah. it's like one of those things like you know you all of a sudden you went out with a 10 that night and you're like wow where you been all my life you know <laughs> that kind of stuff so yeah that's what that that's what it felt like man it was uh it was really nice to see and listen i've i've been a i've kind of been a a, a really strong detractor of lamar jackson mm. i've never been a real believer of him as a passer mm. And so I've always I've always felt that if you take away the run from his game and force him to try to beat you from the pocket, he's not good enough to do that. He can mm -hmm. make a few throws yeah. because he's an athlete. Uh -huh. So that, does, you know, so he'll get away with stuff, but he cannot on a consistent basis beat you with his arm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that's where I'm glad that they were able to corral him, keep him in that pocket, force him to try to beat you with his arm. And they clearly could, and he clearly cannot do that. He still mm -hmm. can't do that. Have you ever watched the um, that quarterback challenge with Lamar Jackson? Did you yes. ever see that video? Yes. Like he missed every target possible. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was one of those things. It's the weirdest thing. If you ever want to even have fun, just watch Marino do it. Oh my God! And Marino oh my hits God. every time. He hit the most the moving target that was like four miles <laughs> away. You know, it's like bullseye. It. He hit it like dead center, you know, because of course it's Marino. He, he had a radar. Like the, he needed like that five points, and he was like, "All right, whatever." <laughs> just yeah, like, what? <laughs> bam, you know, it's like whatever, you know, it's like nothing, you know. Meanwhile, Lamar couldn't hit anything in sight because he's not really a good passer. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's an athlete, mm -hmm. and athletes can make plays at times, and they can freak you out. 
because they can do the things that we can't do. Yep. That doesn't make them a quarterback. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make them a pure passer. And so Miami forced him to be a pure passer and he can't be one. So great job by Miami, man. That was a, that was a lot of fun. It was also a lot of fun watching uh, flow on the sidelines. I, I think I caught him eating his own liver because it must have killed him that he had to stay with Tua. You know what I mean? Because he eventually goes, uh, no, 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 you stay, Jacoby. Uh -huh. yeah, I'm convinced now, finally, that you do suck, and we're going <laughs> to stay with Tua. And it must have killed him. Like this week, like, yeah, he's starting, you know, but barring me breaking his leg or uh -huh. something, you know, maybe I want to go a little Jeff Galuli on him, you know. <laughs> Something like that for you youngins that don't know what Jeff Kaluli is. Look it up. Yeah, he, uh, Jacoby, like, did his little chant, his little thing, and he was like, I'm good. And Tua was like, and Flores was like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, you think you're good, but you're not. <laughs> you're not good. Your leg might be good, but I don't know about yeah. that arm. Sit yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, sit down. I mean, I was, I didn't think about it. The fake injury, like, kind of, you know, I, I, it wasn't really a fake injury. I'm just saying he was wincy in pain, rolling all around. All of a sudden, he's dropping back. Yeah, I'm good. And I, I, I'm going, wow, what a difference. Like, you were writhing in pain, and now you're just fine. And I'm I'm going, well, wait a minute. What the hell is going on here? But anyway, I'm, I'm glad it happened in a way because it, I, I admit it, Dolphin Nation. Admit it. You got to lift when, they, when Tua got oh, the Oh, yeah. The team. You know what I'm you saying? Felt I, it. Yeah, but forget the team, forget everybody else, forget the fact that Flo was probably hating life that he had to go to Tua or whatever, just for yourselves as Dolphin <laughs> fans. It's 6'3". The, the insomnia is, like, setting in. You're, like, you know, going, like, oh, my God, I have to keep watching this thing. It's crazy, you know. Uh, you know, because it was boring. And yeah. then when Tua comes in, it just felt like, okay, whether we win or we don't, F it, dude. At least we get to see Tua. You yep. know what I mean? And I'm glad that with a broken finger and everything, he still threw a a, a, a deep shot there for uh, for uh, old time's sake. And that pass to Waddle was just like on the money. Like he, yeah. I broke it down in the film. He he looked over at his check down and then he checked over at Gaziki. And then finally he was like, he threw it. He threw it before Waddle even broke right. out to his left. Like Waddle yeah. was about to turn and he already just launched it up to him. It was that's, you saw, that's like, called when... anticipation. That's that's called ball placement. Mm -hmm. You know, those kind of things. They you you can't teach that. No. You either have it or you Lamar Jackson it. <laughs> but it's funny too, because when he first went in, you saw that a little bit of that that finger was still bothering him, like that one pass to get where he threw it way behind him. You could tell it was bothering him, but then the adrenaline must have kicked in because then he just started throwing the passes we needed him to throw, and it just marched right down the field. Now, do you think, because we all know that Brian Flores likes to... And the Albert uh, Wilson one, by the way, he threw it in stride also. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Two, two, two blown coverages that I'm just, I'm happy they happened. Well, no, the Ravens suck at that. Their, their secondary sucks. They're beat up. I did a collab with a, a big Ravens YouTuber and he was like, most of our secondaries on IR. He was like, if you're going to take advantage of us, that's where you're going to take advantage of us. But uh, yeah. we all know that Flores likes to bend the truth. As I like to say, do you honestly yeah. think that Boyer was calling those defensive calls? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. I think, I think Boyer called, what Flo wanted him to call. Mm. I don't think Flo was calling all the plays, okay. but I think he was, I think they designed the defense together that week. Okay. And they went under all the scenarios and then Flo's like, this is what I want you to do in this scenario. This is what I want you to do in this scenario. And he was like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And then that's exactly what happened. And so I, I don't think physically he was calling them because it, you can tell he wasn't because he just didn't have, you could tell when somebody's calling all the plays they're mm -hmm. they're working the whole thing so no i don't i don't think he was calling them but i think he influenced that entire uh game plan let's put mm -hmm. it that way yeah because yeah. the, the like we kept saying where has this been this type of defense we win the raiders game we win the colts game we yes win. like yes four yes. four of the and games next. that we lost we win 
and we're sitting at a completely different record right now. We're sitting. I mean, it all depends if the offense does their job. But yeah, I get what you're saying. I I, I understand what you're saying. We yeah, you you probably would have won most of those games. Yeah, I just don't, I I can't answer what the hell's gone on. I can't answer with anything that's going on this year. To be honest with you, I can't explain it. Uh, to me, you know, I talked about it today on the show. I, you know, uh, I I think Flo's time has come and gone, and. I don't you see all the defensive players are developing mm -hmm. uh, Waddle and Gesicki play well in spite of the crap that's gone on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Minka plays well and so does Tunso. Those are two draft picks that were here. I think people, you know, I'm dis I'll disagree with all the folks that think the front office is the problem. Mm -hmm. I think it's the coaching and I think it's the coaching staff. I think. The coach can't find the coaches, mm -hmm. and that's the problem right now, and that's why offensively they are terrible, and it's clear that Flo, you know, hates Tua, to be honest with you. it's it's He, he treated Rosen the same way, dude. Mm -hmm. Same. This, this is, you know, everything's been in front of us. When have you seen Marino ever, you know, hug a player and tap him like, you know, I – and then we've seen two other players, your Landon Roberts and somebody else grabbed Tua in the last couple of weeks. I think everybody knows that the players aren't the problem. Hmm. Personnel isn't the problem. I think they know coaching is the problem uh, right now. And and to me, that's that's where I would make the changes in the offseason. I would get a new head coach because if you're – look, I, I believe Chris Greer and Marvin Allen – and Reggie McKenzie are, 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 are terrific at what they do. And I don't believe all these offensive linemen are as bad as they look. Mm. I just think they have no coaching whatsoever. They don't have offensive creativity whatsoever. There's defensive creativity. You just yeah. saw it on Thursday yeah. night. But there's nothing on offense, man. It looks like a high school offense. Yeah. There's just I, – I don't think those players have the support that they need. And now, by now – these offensive linemen are so beaten down. Their confidence is shot. Uh, the the running game also. I just you know I just think it's a really bad situation on offense right now. And if your coach can't build a staff, he can't be a head coach. Yeah, he can't because not only do you build staffs in the NFL, you have to replace staffs in the yep. NFL yep. because your offensive coordinator is going to move on. You're you know just like Andy Reid's lost one offensive coordinator after another after another. And so you're going to have to have more. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And and all the good teams, eventually you lose your assistant coaches. They get yeah. elevated. You know what I mean? Uh, the, the Heat has had several coaches. Spo has had all kinds of assistant coaches. But he then replaces them and finds the next competent guy to take over. And unfortunately, Flo has not been able to do that. And that's been, I think that's the demise of this team this year, has been the, the failure of having the, the offensive coaches that you need in order to succeed, because we're going to finish the season and we're not going to know a damn thing about these offensive linemen nope. and they all don't stink. I'm sorry, man. They, they There's no way they all stink. No. You know, I'm watching Jalen Phillips develop. I'm, I, I think we're developing a terrific safety tandem now. Oh, my God. With yeah. Jones and Holland. Oh, my God. You know what God. I mean? So good. And, and, and Gesicki's playing well. And Waddle would be a a pro bowler if he was in a real offense. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, I think Van Ginkle now is starting to come around the last couple of weeks here. Raquan Davis, now that you got him back, he's made a difference. Yep. You know, you start to look around. A lot of these young guys have actually really are starting to develop. The only problem is nothing's developing along the offensive line. No. Take, I wonder why. And, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's so an offense, it's just like pulling teeth dude. Oh, yeah. that offense that they're running. It's just, it's a really bad situation. And I'm really gone down to the point that really what the dolphins need is a new head coach. And I would get a veteran coach that can go out there and get the right assistant coaches, mm -hmm. get an experienced line coach and get an experienced offensive coordinator or get an experienced line coach for sure. Yeah. But definitely get an offensive coordinator that has more of a modern twist. Mm -hmm. Either you go get your own Brady from LSU like they did in Carolina, mm -hmm. something like that along those lines, uh, or you get a, a proven offensive coordinator 
along the way. But you know what you need next is a head coach that doesn't meddle a lot on the personnel side. Yeah, exactly. This happened with Gase and now Flo. And they gave Gase too much prop, too much pro- uh, power, and yeah. he pissed people off and got rid of players and did whatever he wanted to. And Flo has that same kind of power. And I think if Greer wants to save his ass in the long run, he gets rid of Flo this offseason and brings in a coach that understands that he coaches the players. Yeah. And let the front office, because I don't want to lose this trio in personnel. Because mm-hmm. I think eventually they will be just fine. Mm-hmm. It's the coaching, but that's just me. So I know a lot of you are going to end up disagreeing with me because a lot of you have given up on the on the front office. But if you start looking defensively, most of the players are starting to develop, except for Iggy, who doesn't play. <laughs> so, you know, you can't do anything about Iggy until next year mm-hmm. when you trade X in the offseason. Mm-hmm. Then you open up a spot and then you can sign a veteran corner. That's not a high, high pay corner, mm-hmm. but a guy that can back up Iggy or teach Iggy and then have Iggy try. And he'll know that he's coming in to kind of be a bridge guy to develop Iggy. Yeah. And that's kind of what you end up doing over because you have him for three more years. So you have to find out if he can play or not. Yeah. And Because and, right now it looks like a, that looks like an absolute monster bust. Yeah. But 100%. again, he doesn't play. So I don't know. Yeah, I'd be I'd be more upset about the Noah Igbenogany pick if we didn't trade back for him. But even using a late first for him, it's like it's it's a, an incredibly bad look. And I, I understand. Well, but but you have to understand at that moment. Yeah, exactly. Your corner was coming off a domestic issue after mm-hmm. you gave him a big contract yeah. and a knee surgery. Mm-hmm. So they drafted him simply as insurance. Yeah, and and so it's a it's become a luxury pick that. Yeah, hindsight tells you, oh, you should have picked something else. Yeah, but hindsight's always twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. At that moment, you don't know where X stands. Yeah. At that moment, you had to cover your ass. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So it, it's it's just one of those things, man. I mean, Devonta Smith said the best corner he ever faced in college was Iggy. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. I mean, you know, what do you want me to tell you? I, I just I think he just needs playing time so we can find out mm-hmm. if he can play or not. But if we're watching all the other defensive players come up and play, maybe there is something in Iggy, but we won't find out until he goes through his, you know. Yeah. He's, uh, he's got to learn, bro. He's yeah. got to go through the that whole ringer of not knowing what the hell he's doing and making mistakes. Yeah, exactly. And and we we, we saw it. You know, he, he did his first year in 2020. He did horrible against the Bills, but your first game, you're going up against Stephon Diggs for the whole game. You're obviously going to do horrible. You didn't do bad the next week against the Jaguars. So, like you said, there's that roller coaster ride that he's going to have to go on. And last year, he filled in a little bit and did all right, actually. Yeah. Last year, it was mm-hmm. the, the year before you're talking about that. Yeah, with Diggs. I mean, that's your first assignment ever as a rookie. <laughs> Good luck. Because even when <laughs> uh, X got ejected, he's like one of the five best route runners in the NFL. So let's. You like end up going up against one of the best guys that will set you up from down mm-hmm. to down. Yeah. One of the guys that like plays with your mind the entire time that they're not there. There's not a lot of those actually no. in the NFL. Diggs happens to be one of those. And like even the uh, Bengals game when X got, got ejected, no comes in. He does. He does pretty, you know, you don't, if you don't notice him, you're doing good. You're doing fine. Rookie right. just, keep going unnoticed but you hit the nail on the head when it came to the coaching because we all see these coaching hires and everyone looks at the coaching hire you know oh they went out and got you know say this year someone finally signs the enemy or something oh they went out and got him it's not necessarily always about the head coach it's about who he puts together yeah especially if it's a good head coach who's not adam gase where he controls the offense and then he'll bring in whoever on defense and we saw that with for with flores because you know his first year in, he brought a lot of Patriots in, Patrick Graham, Chad O'Shea. It was just a lot of his buddies in, but it kind of worked, especially with Patrick Graham, who then went on to the Giants. But then this year, it was just, he was like, oh, on my third year, I'm a good head coach. Let me bring in a bunch of young guys. And he br- the thing that bothered me the most is if it didn't work, like our offense wasn't great last year, why are you promoting within? Like, Offensive corn, offensive coordinators promoted within offensive line coach promoted within. He, do, he doesn't have any options. He doesn't know of people. He was only in one place for 16 years. I had this conversation with one of the beat guys mm-hmm. that 
Um, and, and sometimes fans look at it the wrong way when they see a guy that's bounced around in seven teams mm -hmm. and then they say, well, that guy's been all over the place. Well, that's because he's a good coach mm -hmm. because if he's been on seven teams, he's a good coach because obviously he's doing something just because he was part of a bad situation. Doesn't mean he was the problem yeah. of the bad situation, but if he keeps getting hired, that means he must be doing a good job for everybody else. That's why they're hiring him. Unfortunately, sometimes you end up in a bad situation. You know what I'm saying? You can't do anything about it. I just tried to start a station here locally. Unfortunately, it ended up being in a bad situation that you didn't have the support you needed. So it, caved in you know what i mean mm -hmm. it doesn't mean it's my fault yeah. it doesn't mean it was a lot of the people that were working with me that were doing a great job it's just unfortunately if you don't have the support you're not going to succeed you know it's one of those things so um i, I just you know when you when you look at what's going on with this team it, it, it's on that offensive side there is no support for those players no they have nowhere to look to find the answers and that's why I'm telling you when I saw Marino talking to Tua and Landon Roberts, and I keep forgetting who the other player was. This yeah, past he like week. grabbed him while I was running in the tunnel. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they're all telling him he's not the problem. Mm -hmm. That's what they're all doing. Because I've never seen this before. Yeah. And it's because I think everybody knows what the problem is all over that place. You know, I think the owner knows. I think the front office knows. I think the players know. I think they know that the flow is the problem. And he, he is acting like Matt Patricia mm. and Josh McDaniels, that he's the smartest guy in the room. Mm. And you can tell that that's what's going on because that's why he gets rid of that staff and he hires from within. And the beauty of being fired and hired and fired and hired in the NFL is that you end up meeting all kinds of other coaches. Experience. You end up working in all other systems. Mm -hmm. And so throughout your tenure, if you're in one city on one team for 16 years, like you are with the Patriots, you only know the coaches that are there. That's it. And the coaches that are gone are probably retired, like Charlie Weiss and Romeo Cornell and all that. So you can't use them. So you tried to take a couple guys from that tree mm -hmm. that Belichick was like, eh, I don't need those guys anyways. <laughs> I replace them. You can go ahead and have them. But the beauty of being fired and hired all over the place is that now you will have a much bigger Rolodex. You will know more coaches, different schemes, all kinds of stuff. Philbin had the same problem. He was stuck in Green Bay yeah. his entire career. So he knew nobody. And when he left to Miami, they closed the door behind them and said, yo, Baldy, you're not taking anybody. Mm. Because in that case... Mike McCarthy did not want to part ways with anybody at that moment. He didn't want to give anybody. I knew a couple of people in the Green Bay organization. They were like, well, why didn't they hire the QB coach? That's mm -hmm. why I would hire. Even though he's not a great people person, I would have hired the QB coach is what they told me because he actually knew how to develop quarterbacks and offenses. Whereas Philbin, all he did was help McCarthy design the offense throughout the week, mm -hmm. not call the plays. Yeah. Which is an enormous difference when you have to call the chess match. Yes. Every moment in the game. You know what I'm saying? So Philbin struggled to build a coaching staff also. Okay. Although little did we know Philbin had a better head coach on his staff than we currently have now in Zach Taylor, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but seriously. <laughs> so uh, Philbin, struggled with that and now we're watching uh, the same movie all over again mm -hmm. with brian flores same movie as in matt patricia and josh mcdaniels that they're the smartest guys in the room and they ended up looking like idiots and they had to go back to belichick and the same story just like philbin a guy that was stuck in one place and has no rolodex nobody knows him so he's not really going to be able to get the kind of coaches he needs mm -hmm. to work alongside him. And, and you, that's probably why, you know, everyone talks about that Belichick tree is just rotten because every time somebody leaves, they don't do well. Well, that's because like you said, they've been, they've been taught by one guy. You right. need experience from other guys to give you a, a, like a, like a big plethora of, Oh, okay. I could take like Bill Walsh. Right. He had a ton of offense coordinators, defense coordinators that went out and did great. 
And that's because they had the experience. They weren't stuck in one place. Right. And Bill Walsh was in Cleveland with with Paul Brown. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's like he had experience and then he ends up there, you know, in San Francisco. So, yeah, exactly. And he had great coaches, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Holmgren to Dennis Green to uh, Mariucci to I mean, he had all kinds of assistant coaches with him over the years. Sam Weish, all these kind of guys that went on to actually become head coaches. Yep. That's that. But the, Hey, Don Shula had a great staff too. Mm-hmm. All the great coaches have great assistant coaches. Usually that's the kind of the way it works, you know, <laughs> cause you can't do it by yourself. You know what I mean? You're going to need Bill Arnsberger and you're going to need Monty Clark. And it's going to be like, they're going to need Mel Phillips and you're, you're going to need uh, Mike Westoff. And you know, you're going to, you're going to need oh, great oh, coaches okay. around you to kind of help you mm-hmm. get to that point. And most of the, most of the top coaches have excellent uh, assistants and usually assistants like to be in places where there's stability too. Yep. So now we got a guy that's going to go into his fourth year on the hot seat. It's going to be that much harder to get the kind of assistance that you need. And look at, we had a good offensive line coach. We had Dave, the googly mouth, who's a very good offensive line coach. He helped the Colts out. And he, the, and the funny thing is the dolphins wanted to keep him. And he said, no, nah, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to leave. And I wonder why, yeah. like now you well, sit back and you're like, I wonder why he wanted to leave. Yeah. Same thing with Chang Gailey. Chang Gailey was like, oh, I'm done. A lot of people. And this is something I read a lot. A lot of people I, it's think a flow it was two, bro. It's a flow thing. A lot of people think two is the reason Chan Gailey left. Or a lot of people think that it was the fans that why Chan Gailey left. Like we have that much power that we pushed Chan Gailey out of Miami. No. Chan Gailey simply told Flo, kid's not ready. Mm-hmm. Flo said, play the kid. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And that that you lost Chan Gailey at that moment. Yep. Because he forgot more offense than you're going to know, Flo, and everybody else in that building. Why did you hire him? He's your offensive coordinator, right? Mm-hmm. If he tells you the kid's not ready, don't play the kid. Exactly. And by the way, you're, and only Flo would think, this is how much you don't like the kid. Hey, he's not ready? Great. I'll play him against the Rams. Yeah. I mean, only Flo would think of stupid shit like that to actually play the kid against that defensive front for his first time you wouldn't wait for a bye week wait for a crappy team wait for a stretch in the schedule that he's ready but if your offensive coordinator is telling you dude he's not ready yet and you still go with it it's because you think you're smarter than chan gailey and you're not and that's flow has ruined relationships it doesn't matter if it's kenny stills it doesn't matter if it's minka doesn't matter if it's the assistant coaches the GM's the one that gave him Gailey. Mm-hmm. He's the one that then decides with this three-headed monster. The, the, the GM is the one that brought in Fitz. He's the one that decides to go with Brissett. This is all the, the undoing of the Dolphins is all the doing of Brian Flores, pretty much. If you really look at it, he didn't want uh, Eric Flowers there. He wanted to go young. That's not mm-hmm. the GM's call. The GM's not going to say, Hey, why don't we cut a guy so I can take a cap hit and look really bad as a general manager? Pay him to play for another team. Right. And he's the guy that signed Eric Flowers. And now he doesn't want, and now the coach doesn't want Eric Eric Flowers. So it kind of tells you what's going on. That that other guy, Emmanuel, whatever, other guy that's helping out too. I always forget that guy's name too. He's helping out another team too at this point. And where's Miami? You know what I mean? And so these are things that are going on that are really hurting this football team. And that's why I say you need to get a new coaching staff next year. Find a coach that can build a real staff. Okay. And find a coach that isn't going to meddle in personnel nearly that much anymore. You know, let the personnel people handle the damn personnel Mm -hmm. and the coaches coach the damn players and move on already. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that could happen to get Brian Flores fired? I think he's fired already, by the way. Really? That's just me. Yeah. I, I believe they will change in the off season. I think they've gotten, they've hit the, the they've hit the fork in the road. Mm. That's why I told you the Marino thing, the, the players, 
all this stuff coming out and you're watching it in public before our eyes. I think all of this is playing out in front of us. If you just put it all together, mm. I, it, it, if, if, if the owner and the front office doesn't notice that that's the problem, then everybody else is going to pay the price. Front office is going to go down the following year mm. with flow and the owner's going to have to clean house. And then the owner's going to look again, the fan base is going to say, please, Ross, get lead, mm-hmm. pass it on to your partner already and get out of here, you know, because that's what's going to end up happening. I believe if the Dolphins are smart and they see what I'm seeing, they need to make a change at the head coaching spot. That's just me. It's very interesting. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens this offseason. But I think I think they see the same thing I do because that Marino move, dude. Mm. Sorry, bro. That tells me Marino likes this kid and know, and he knows that the kid's not the problem. He knows what's the problem, and I think they see Flo as the problem. I really do. So that's just me. So two, he, Flores came out. He said two is playing against the Jets, which, duh, he <laughs> should have played against the Texans, but it is what it right. is. Looking at the next seven games, you know, we, we talked about the, this Ravens game, that there was a chance any given Thursday, but we were like, meh, and then, and no – there are some people like my father, he always picks the dolphins. He doesn't care, but that's just because he's a giant Homer. Normally people didn't think we were going to win this game. Looking at the rest of the season, what are the chances you think we go 10 and seven? Oh no, I, I don't think they run the table. No, the, there's no shot that they're going to win every game. I, I just, not with that offense. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'd love to think that just because everything went well, you know, you're, Look, they can beat the Jets because mm-hmm. they don't have any quarterbacks to scare you. They can beat Carolina. I don't believe in Cam Newton. He can scream all he wants. <laughs> he still can't pass. Okay, so that don't matter to me. So as long as they they corral him and they don't let him run the ball, yeah, uh, I think they'll be just fine. The Giant game will not be easy. Yes, so that's that's a game that they can lose at New Orleans. They can lose against that defense. Oh, yeah, against Miami's offense. Miami's offense is, you know, not something scary at this point in time. Uh, at Tennessee against that defense, also, that's going to be, you know, I'm 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 not afraid of Ryan Tannehill <laughs> on defense, but I am afraid for the offense. And then you've got the New England game, and they're going to want revenge. Yeah. And, and by the way, I hate to say this, but Mac Jones threw dimes yesterday. Mm-hmm. I watched that game, and every throw that Tua can make, by the way. Mm-hmm. Every single throw. If Tua had the same line and the coaching staff and the running game, he could hit the sa- all the same throws. But having said all that, I got to give Mac Jones credit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was, he was accurate as hell yesterday. The ball placement was superb, dude. I mean, it was just like that. That's the way you throw receivers open. That's how you throw them to the 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 – away from defenders. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ball placement was just beautiful. Something that I know Tua has in him also, you just got to give him the same kind of line. And that's what I was thinking yesterday when I'm watching that. I'm going, if Tua was there, he would do, he would be doing the same exact things that Mac Jones is doing because he would have the same structure around him that would allow him to succeed. So, uh, you know, that last three games, New Orleans, Tennessee, and New England, I don't think they run the table there. I would love to tell you that, man, you know, but I, I've, I've got to see more from, from this offense to feel that kind of confident that they all of a sudden they can win nine games in a row yeah. after losing seven in a row. That's, that's a lot to ask, man. It yeah, just and it, it would be a miracle. <laughs> and this is why losing all the games that you already did, that you yeah. had a chance. This is why this puts you in this position that you have to sit there and try to convince yourself that they're going to win out. And, you know, I haven't seen the coaching to be that good to be able to win out. And I haven't seen the offense to be that good that you can win out. And by the way, the defense hasn't been consistent enough to think that you can win out. Mm -hmm. I know that they've performed well the last two weeks, but it's not the kind of performance that I've seen for the last nine weeks. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? And again, two weeks ago, that win was not, anything to write home about or be proud of last Thursday it was, but you know, let's not get too crazy about that other win. 
And and that's the thing that I noticed too, because with the way we played against Baltimore, so aggressive. I think we blitzed what like thirty something times. Like we went after him. You can't do that consistently because someone's going to pick it up. Someone's going to figure out how to stop it. So now it's and now it's to the point of the I call it the wildcat. When we pulled out the wildcat in two thousand eight, no one expected it. And right. it won us a ton of games. But then in 2009, we throw out the Wildcat. People shut it down. Like, it was like, all right, we figured you out. Is there, like, like you're talking about, is there some type of alteration or can the defense consistently pull a Ravens game out? When, you know, we'll do it against these younger quarterbacks. Like, we might even be able to do it to Mac Jones at the end of the year, consistently get that pressure on him because he's not mobile. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not Cam Newton. He, heck, he's not even Zach Wilson. He's not going to be able to get away from it. But then the smart quarterbacks is what we have to worry about. So, well, you don't, you don't. The, the good thing about that stretch that you're talking about, you, there, there are no great passers. Mm -hmm. well, I, I mean, Mac Jones is the only one that can, you know, I'll give him credit. He'll stand in there in the pressure and yeah. take the hits and deliver the ball. Um, Ryan, I'm not really afraid of. New Orleans has nothing. The Jets don't have anything. Carolina, and then the Giants. The, you know, the kid's all right, but he's yeah. not like, you know. So there aren't really any great passers mm -hmm. left. You know what I'm saying? So that's the good thing. You're not facing a, an Aaron Rodgers or a Tom Brady or a Russell Wilson or yeah. anything. My Mahomes, you're not facing anything elite yeah. right now. So that's the good thing about, about you know, the, the this stretch of seven games now. Yeah. Well, we can only hope. And just take it one game at a time. <laughs> I'm hoping they go like, you know, five and two or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's like realistic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, dude, I would love seven and oh. But if you go five and two and you end up eight and nine, I guess, is what you'll end up on the season. Uh, at least we won't be giving Philadelphia this great pick anymore, <laughs> <laughs> which is the beautiful thing, at least in that sense. But and and you'll start. Look, man, in the end, it's. I'm not worried about any playoffs. I'm not worried about, you know, doing seven, winning seven straight that's, or nine straight in this case. That would be so unrealistic. But what I want to see is the continued development yeah. of Javon Holland, who was all over the place on oh, Thursday night. God. You know, Brandon Jones, to me, I really like what this kid can bring to the table. I think he's a thumper from that position, too. You know, uh, Jalen Phillips. He's getting better and better. That's really, to me, what it's all about now down the stretch is watching some of these young guys that are your future, you know, develop and, and make us feel better about next season. And then we'll find out in the offseason how they, you know, intend on addressing it because I don't think it'll be very motivational, by the way, for the fan base if you bring back Flo mm -hmm. because I think people are kind of tired of Flo's you know, like Patriot ways and stuff. Mm. And he, he looks silly on the podium where he's thinking about all these answers he wants to craft and how he needs to say them. You know what I mean? It's really, and it's so, I don't know if coach realizes how obvious it is, mm. how when you ask him a question, it's like, okay, let me think about how I'm going to answer this by saying nothing whatsoever and make sure I don't reveal anything mm -hmm. because my Lord, if I happen to reveal that, you know, two is going to play. Oh my God. The KGB is going to, you know, going to uh, <laughs> kidnap me or something. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on in his mind, but it's just one of these things that like, dude, we see it. Like yeah. you can't hide it flow. Like we we're we're watching you work your mind on how to design and tell us absolutely nothing, you know, it's just, <laughs> just like weird. I, I think there's a part of the fan base that's kind of had enough of, of the flow thing. And I think the way he's handled Tua has turned off a lot of people mm. that like Tua. Okay. All right. Yeah, and, and speaking of Minka, he was just placed on the COVID-19 list. I just read here. How about that? <laughs> and, and Blake James and the university of Miami have parted ways in breaking news. I'm hearing too that Steve uh, Sarkeesian isn't doing too well in Texas. Is he drinking again? I could be. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What would you say? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Sarkeesian. Yeah. And no, uh, so that dude's had his uh, ups and downs, as they say. So, yeah. <laughs> could be a good possibility, OC, or, or is that is that wishful thinking? <laughs> I don't know, man. Sarkeesian in South Beach. I don't know if I want to mix that, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying.
Did you ever see him at that at that function where he no. wasn't functioning very well? <laughs> yeah, but Sarke I think it's Sarkeesian drunk at banquet or something. I'm look that or, up. Yeah, it's something like that. I think it's still on video somewhere out there. And uh yeah, he had his issues. He's had his issues, but he is a, a good offensive mind. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of guy that, you know, I, I was talking about this on the show that you maybe get like a Jack Del Real type mm -hmm. since since um, and I'm not the biggest Jack Del Real guy, mm -hmm. but but um, what's it called? Uh, Jackson, one of one of the personnel guys, uh, um, um, McKenzie, I'm sorry, uh, knows him well because they work together in Oakland. Mm -hmm. And so you bring a guy like that, he won't F with you so much in personnel at all. Mm -hmm. He can manage the teams, and then you can get, and he definitely has a Rolodex because he's been everywhere yeah. of assistant coaches. And then you, and he's the kind of guy that you probably could marry with a younger offensive coordinator to kind of, you know, make sure you run the kind of offenses that you need in today's NFL, that kind of stuff. Not somebody... But I think you need to find kind of a, a grizzled veteran type of coach. And then somebody has connections, too, and that can put a staff together. And a guy like Del Rio would be able to do something like that, at least. You know what I mean? And he, I, that's just an example, okay, <laughs> because Reggie McKenzie knows him. But I'm just saying you need to find somebody of that ilk. Yeah, and it, it's because we all know that in the comment section, people are going to lose their mind about what Jack Del Rio did in Jacksonville. But yeah, 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 exactly. They went yeah. to the playoffs with him as their head coach, like, and they went to the playoffs in Oakland. So he he does know what he's doing. Just bring him in. This is this is the dream, right? You bring him in, and then say things fall apart in uh, Minnesota. You bring in Zimmer as your defensive coordinator. Right. Something like that. Right. And then you just exactly. build this great staff because, and I talked about this and I got a lot of well, flack. All those Zimmer, Zimmer's an odd bird, bro. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is an odd bird, bro. Yeah. Have you seen his girlfriend? No. Smoke show. I'm Googling it right now. Smoke show. All of you out there, Google Mike Zimmer's girlfriend. Smoke show. She's a blonde. Are you half his age? Are you kidding yeah. me? She was on the cover of Maxim. My, my brain is filled with like all kinds of useless information. Okay. I'm just saying, you How know, it's just one of those things. I, it's a gift, but yeah, yeah. He's uh he's an odd bird, but I, I got to give the old man credit. He's, he's got a <laughs> lovely that's half his age. Bro. He's winning. <laughs> oh, he is winning. There's no doubt about it. He's winning. <laughs> She's but you can also tell he and Kirk Cousins don't get all talk about another another coach QB combo that is just <laughs> at odds. It isn't just two and flow, but oh my we'll god, Zimmer oh. and uh and Cousins, man. How much That's time stuff. is left on Kirk Cousins' contract? Because it's fully guaranteed. It's the first but everywhere he goes, he's hated. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know if you know this, but in Washington, the owner's the one that wanted RG3. Oh Shanahan wanted no part of rg3 so he went and drafted cousins that year in the fourth round so like the owner and did everything oh yeah we'll trade up to get him and, you know and meanwhile the head coach wanted no part of this move <laughs> but the owners you know snyder's doing it the owner whatever and that's why that's why that when you think about it it makes so much sense why shanahan left rg3 out on the field oh on God. one leg and he's like yeah i'll get this snyder this son of a I'll get him back. Yeah, yeah. No, RG, you stay in there, bro. You get us through. You go ahead. <laughs> His leg oh, is God, just hello, on his You know, and then it was over. That's it. It was oh. over. It was his way of sabotaging the owner back for the owner forcing RG3 on him. Oh, so he got him on. He's like, great. I can play my guy, Kirk Cousins. <laughs> so meanwhile, the owner's hating Kirk Cousins because of everything. Then Cousins goes and has more success. And so it pisses the owner off. <laughs> And so now Cousins is in a position where the head coach and him now all don't see eye to eye. It's just like, wow, man, that is uh, that is tough. And they extended his contract. So okay. I believe I believe he still has two more years guaranteed, by oh the way. My God. So, yeah, yeah. He hasn't played bad this year. No. If you look at his numbers, he's actually played really well. That's been the only thing Rick Spielman 
has not been able to solve because he's built a nice offense and defense, but he hasn't gotten that one guy that can put them over the top. Because if he had a really good quarterback in the last couple of years with that defense, he might have won a Super Bowl, actually. Okay. Yeah, Cousins is under contract next year as well. And two two more years, right? Is it? It's for one more. Yeah, he's got he so he's on contract this year and then next year, and then in 2023, he's a free agent. Oh, okay. And so he's only got one year. So okay, that's that at least it's, no, no, no. Fu- it's fully guaranteed. Oh, yeah. He's making 45 million next year. Yeah. Yeah. Good for yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, that's that's what Mahomes said. All right. <laughs> You pay him that, you know what you're gonna pay me, right? Right, exactly. Kansas, Kirk Cousins making that much. He's like, like you <laughs> jerks in Minnesota. You know what I'm saying? It's like everybody around the league must hate Minnesota for that stupid deal. Oh yeah, because they, you know, it's just like the Raiders giving Gruden a hundred million dollar deal, and then here comes Matt Rule out of the college, and it's like, yeah, you're gonna have to give me mm-hmm. the same kind of deal, even though I've done nothing in the NFL. You know what I mean? And it's just, and this is all the Raiders' fault. Because they gave him that stupid contract and took the numbers to a a, a, a a place that nobody really wants to go in the NFL. And there you go. Can you imagine? I mean, think about this. I think, actually, the old man died a second time after he watched his son pay that much. Because that's more money than Al Davis would have spent on coaches over the next 300 years. Mm-hmm. If he was owning, because that guy would never pay his, his, the second his coaches became valuable, he'd let him go and replace him with somebody else. That's what he would always do. You think, you think if he was still alive, he would have brought Gruden back because he, he's the one who tried to send him away. (laughs) And no, there's no way he brings them back. No. Once he gets rid of you, this, this isn't the Yankee Billy Martin thing that they would hire and fire Billy Martin you know, every two years and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Al Davis, once he gets rid of your ass, he doesn't want you anymore. No. When he got rid of Lane Kiffin, he wasn't going to want him anymore. So, and plus you get expensive. He doesn't mm. pay. He Hell, I think he used to rip his coaches off, like not even finish paying their contracts. God. And they would always take him to court or something like that. I know Lane Kiffin had to take him to court to get the rest of his money and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I mean, Al Davis was notoriously cheap with his coaches. So that's the hilarious part about watching his son give this fool a hundred million dollars. <laughs> well, big nice. O, it's a fantastic show, fantastic week. We got to we got to sit through the whole weekend just enjoying that upset victory. I know, I know. it was I know. awesome. But like usual, I got to get a big and got to get a Jets win this week. Oh, you got and you got to get a big because the Jets defense yes. is horrid. They've been giving yes. up like thirty something points a game. Like yes. And I'm going. I'm going to be at that game, so they better they better make it a good game for me. All right. Does does the does the quarterback's mom show up? Because she's smoking hot. Have you seen the quarterback's mom? She's a smoke show. <laughs> Is it, smoke he's like show. what? Fifteen? How did he make it to the end? No, no, by the way, notice I I I know all the smoke shows all over the place. Doesn't matter where it is. I'm just you should uh, make I a website. Know. NFL smoke shows. <laughs> NFL smoke shows. Exactly. Exactly. I know she messes with them with the politics and all that, but she's a smoke show, man. I got to say, I mean, that's got to be rough as a kid, oh, if right? Your mom oh is a God. smoke show and all the kids want to be your friends, <laughs> but you're all looking at them going, you sons of you, you guys don't want to be my friend. You want to uh, be her friend. Miss Wilson. Yeah, we're yeah, gonna- yeah. You guys are out here to watch TV in my house. Cause you just want to see mom bring you a, a glass of water and say, wow. Hey, hey look hey, at that. Hey, Take Zach, the you- G and the L out. All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What? Zach, you invited us over for a pool party. Is your mom going to come swimming? Right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Zach, is your mom going to be in the pool party? <laughs> oh, man. Cars lined up around the block. <laughs> Fathers are getting off to walk their son. Oh, you know, I'll, try, I'll drop him off. In, uh, you know, Mrs. he's not a good what? swimmer. I need to stay here and watch him in the pool. <laughs> Mrs. Uh, where is she? Is she around here? You know. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted, I want to say hi to her and make sure she knows that uh, my son's here. If there's any issues, call me. <laughs> I yeah. love how it, at the end of every one of our shows, it just goes into a different direction. <laughs> eh, what the hell? <laughs> have, a, have a little bit. Hey, this is the week, man. We got to have some fun. Yeah. Crush the damn Ravens. Shock the world. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing, man. And now, now you got to crush the Jets. Oh, yeah. And think about that. Then, then, then it gets just so sweet. 
and all and all and you're going to be there with the MetLife takeover. Yep. So that's going to be a lot of fun. One day, one day I'm going to broadcast from that MetLife takeover outside that parking lot. Oh, one day, one day. Wait. Well, big O, like usual, where can they find you? Uh, big O Radio Show. That is the name. Follow it. Uh, please subscribe and uh, hit the like button there on YouTube. And of course, everywhere else from uh, iTunes to Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, you name it. iHeart, wherever you uh, get your podcast, search for Big O Radio Show. We do it daily at 10 a.m. from 10 to 1 on average. Uh, lots of Dolphins talk. And of course, I talk about all the other teams uh, in South Florida, but it all usually centers around the Dolphins uh, 24 seven. Well, hopefully we have another big win next week. And then we have another fantastic show next week. Big O, Amen. always a pleasure doing these with you. And I look forward to talking to you next week. It's a blessing. You all be good out there. Much love. I'm telling you <laughs> the way our conversations go is just, <laughs> we start talking about dolphin seriousness and then it just ventures that's why me and Big O started this show, because he's just fantastic. We get along and have a great back and forth. But other than that, guys, I will see you probably. Uh, I'm debating whether I'm going to do the picks video Wednesday and then nothing Thursday. That might be it. So you might see me tomorrow with the picks video and then Thursday, no video. And then Friday, the uh, preview for the Miami Dolphins taking on the Jets. And then, like I said, there's no live stream on Sunday because I'm going to the game. So other than that, guys, I'll see you tomorrow with the picks. But like usual, stay classy. Fins up.